I think I go from a, about a one to a three fade and then blend it at the top, shorten the back along on the front, swoop to the right. Is that, that's pretty scientific with it, right? Yeah. yeah so just pretty much, uh, you, you can either do that or you can just, you can just go crazy. You can either do my very specific request or you know, whatever you want. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Joe and today uh, I'm not getting a haircut, but I'm with fitness entrepreneur, YouTuber, Max Tuning, who is gonna be getting a haircut. Max, thanks for coming on. Welcome Absolutely, to the show. thanks for having me. I'm excited for this haircut and this interview, man. This is I don't it. even know what's gonna happen. I, I can, I'm gonna come out a changed man with my hair. Oh uh, yeah, you best believe it. When you're on the Blue Mon channel, great things happen. I'm excited for it. First of all, how long have you been on, on YouTube, roughly? How many years? I think five since 2004. 13 is probably when I started. That's, that's, math is terrible, six years. About six years? About six years, I think coming up in like May will be six years on YouTube. Started YouTube right out of college in 2013. Uh, so I graduated and I started YouTube kind of at the same time. I've noticed, at least with some of my research, most of the time you've been on YouTube, you've, you've rocked the same hairstyle yes. for the most part. Why is that? I'm afraid of change with my hair. <laughs> for the longest time in college, for simplistic reasons and financial reasons, uh, reasons me and my roommates would just set like an eight guard on the buzzer and stand over our balcony and just shave each other's heads. And then right when I graduated college was when I was like, you know what, I should probably get a real haircut. So then I started growing it out and kind of go through that awkward, not really grown out phase. And when you're on the internet, people tell you that what you should do with your hair and what you should have done. And, it's always it's always conflicting though. I know. Someone will be like, you like gotta Max, do this. Skin fade. Get a skin fade. Get, get a hard part, Max. I'm like, I, what if I, I don't want that? I mean, my challenge is always like, people tell me I make like, you know, I'm doing the same hairstyle too many times. As soon as I try to do something different, they're like, what are you doing? That looks terrible. Yeah, they're like, I hate that. You, you have know. to go back. There's always a catch twenty two. You briefly mentioned that you started out with a buzz cut back in was it in college? Yep. Before that was a nice bowl cut in uh, middle school. You know, lovely. All right. You brought up the bowl cut yourself. Oh, there it is. That's that's Skater Max right there. <laughs> if if, if you were to about. dive even further back from uh, from that photo, it would be a gothic super bowl cut, Max. I mean, YouTube is my main focus. I have a lot of other things that I do, whether it be clothing, working with a lot of different companies, different businesses I'm trying to start that I'm partnered with and I'm getting into that I have a lot of interest in. But at the end of the day, content creation is like my main passion, my main um, just source of, of happiness. I mean, there's a lot of things that when you start social, it's easy that when you start like a business, that kind of, it overtakes, you know, all your time. And then you're like, oh, I can't create social because I started this business. Whereas I don't want to lose focus to that because I'm like, I, I just, I love creating content. I love, you know, making people laugh. I love just getting feedback from people. So I, I always put that as my high, highest priority. So I'm a YouTuber first and a businessman second, whether that's, the best move for me, I don't know, but it's it's at this time what makes me the happiest. Exactly, so. yeah. I would classify myself as once a fitness YouTuber, typical uh, you know, health and fitness, workout advice, nutrition, but nowadays my videos are, I consider myself an entertainer, or at least I, I think I'm entertaining. I've come to learn that my content just helps people kind of put a smile on their face, so maybe people are having a, a bad day. Um, I like kind of being wacky. I've, I've been doing it for years. I'm I'm 29 now, and I'm oh, yeah? I'm still saying the same dumb humor that I was, you know, five years ago. And I try to make the transition of making fitness something like a part of my life rather than my entire life. It's something that I do during my day. It's not the the main focus of everything I do because it's not my main focus in life. Like I enjoy working out. I enjoy fitness and nutrition and health and everything that goes along with it. The confidence you gain from the gym and, and everything. But it's I have a lot more to me that I that I. It's can, not, uh, can deliver, that's so. not just, not, that's not all there is to you. Basically. There's more, I, I got substance, you know? I didn't start working out until I was a sophomore in college. And I, I remember my entire freshman year, my first year of university, college, uh, my roommates would all go to the gym. I was like, y'all are stupid. How am I gonna, you know, increase my kill to death ratio in Call of Duty <laughs> if, if I'm, you know, pumping iron. And then my sophomore year, my second year of university or college, my roommate was like, you know what, we signed, we signed the lease. He's like, I want to lose a little bit of weight. You're skinny and pathetic. You need to gain some muscle. <laughs> like, let's just go to the gym. And I was like, okay. And uh, I mean, after about two months, I thought that I was the actual Hulk. <laughs> and I was just walking around like a tank top thinking I'm huge. 
once you start seeing progress, like you, most people generally never want to lose that. They never want to go back to where they were. Mm. So once maybe you're trying to put on some muscle, once you start seeing a little bit of gains here and there, like you generally are like, I'm going to keep doing this. So you, you get addicted quick. And um, I just fell in love with it. And yeah, your story sounds a little different to a lot of people who have kind of turned gym into a large part of their life. You know, a lot of people would say that they started out feeling a little bit insecure, a little bit shy, and the gym kind of transformed them. I just wanted to meet babes. You, you just I, I, I had broken up with my, my girlfriend from high school, and uh, I was like, you know what? I was like, how to get girls? Muscles. I so you had the I confidence the since the, since the get-go. I mean, I, I, everyone, I think no matter how confident you are, you always have maybe a little bit of shyness and insecurities yeah. about certain features, and I was just, I would see people that were working out, I'm like, you know what, like, I wanna see if I can, you know, get some muscle. The, the, really, the reason I started was I, to make myself physically look better, or I thought that lifting weights and putting on muscle would make me look better. Yeah, you know? I mean, it and then I quickly learned that the more and more years you do it, you start learning that like maybe as like a first time they see you, that may uh, you might be more attractive but then to them actually, at the end of the day. Like surprisingly, there has to be something more. There has to be something <laughs> more, and uh, so I, I quickly learned that it, it doesn't matter, and you shouldn't lift just to get girls. But you know, whatever gets you, whatever gets you going. And then, it, you know, whatever can get you hooked, I think more power to you. So was the getting into fitness what sparked your interest in health as well? Or were you always kind of a, like, conscious, healthy eater? <sighs> to be honest, I, I'm, I'm not the poster child for a perfectly okay. healthy lifestyle. I'm more of a whenever I want something I want, I eat it kind of <laughs> diet. I'm on the seafood diet right now that if I, just, if I see it and I want it, I'm like, it's going in my mouth. <laughs> Ever forward is a, it's a, it's a really old military phrase. My dad was in the military a long time ago, um, and he just kind of took, he got it from that and kind of like lived his life by. Just kind of like always, always progressing, always moving forward. He actually passed away in 2005 from ALS, and it was just like kind of like a phrase we always remember that he said and believed and you know lived by. We'd always, whenever we kind of get in a position where you know things aren't working out, we would always just kind of have that like ever forward mindset, just to always progress. And then I remember maybe a year after I started my YouTube channel, it was one of those things that instead of like thinking up a brand, thinking up a why I, what that brand means, I was like, why don't I just take something that already means something to me? Yeah, definitely. Tell people about it. So I don't, I don't, I didn't have to like fabricate what it meant. The process of creating is so important and, mm -hmm. and fun as well. And I think in the long term, it's what is going to make your brand or my brand stick out from like. Yeah. I mean, hair was so life changing to me. Um, you got nice hair, man. Well, thanks. <laughs> so, but I didn't know, I, I never knew how to like use it to its full, full yeah. potential until until I kind of went down the, the the YouTube route. But before I, I was on YouTube, like I said, I was watching other people do their hair, use hair products, uh, talk about haircuts, what to tell your barber. This is all stuff that I didn't have a clue about. Right. When I got my first cool haircut, like my first good haircut, uh, like short back and sides, I right. looked completely completely different. And then also for me, it was hair products <clears throat> that I was specifically passionate about because mm. I was like, this this product, um, I can achieve this look, but if I want to get some more texture, some more volume, I need something like this. Yeah, you know? you're, 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 you're solving a problem. Like you, you're like, this has this, but like, I was like, I wish I had this, like, why don't I just make it? You know? Yeah, yeah, why don't exactly. I, I create something that has everything that I want? Yeah, and it's always been important for anyone who's interested in, you know, trying out some Bloom On stuff. Or, or purchasing a Bloom On product to know that like actually I've really put a lot of like effort into yeah. trying to make them really good. I still don't consider myself someone who exudes confidence. I, I it, it's always a learning thing for me. It's always a you know I'm constantly trying to just improve all aspects of my life. And yeah, confidence is being one of those things. The, the more you do something, the more you get confidence. So I think oftentimes confidence can be too linked or too associated with physical appearance. Mm -hmm. Or like. You know, I'm gonna make my hair better to boost my confidence. I'm gonna become stronger to boost yeah. my confidence. But really, a lot of it is just doing it over and over again, and uh, doing something that you're initially yeah. uncomfortable with, and do that enough, and that's like that's a, that's a big key to growing confidence as well. Right. Isn't that right, Mr. Ghost? Speaking of dogs, you've got you've got a dog, fairly newish. How long have you had him now? I have had a golden doodle for. I, I got him on January 12th, so all, I've had him for almost two months. So he's a little over three months old. I can't stress enough like how much I like enjoy making YouTube videos, yeah. um, and it's, it's cool. always 
it, it's always difficult at times when you know you're like, okay, what am I gonna film today? Like, you know, especially when I'm just living the same life as most people. You know, maybe I have more freedom throughout the day, but at the end of the day, we all, you know, wake up, do some work, eat some food, watch <laughs> a movie, go to sleep. You know, there, I'm not living this this lavish lifestyle that I'm. Fl- you know, jumping out of jumping out of planes, riding yeah. jet skis every single day. You're and, not trying to be Logan Paul. Yeah, so yeah, I'm just I'm just, <laughs> I'm just like, how can I do the same thing that most people do and make it a creative way and make it make it you know enjoyable and creative? But I, I think right now, I think a lot of people get a lot out of my videos, and I, I feel that if I stopped right now, just because I was like, you know, like eh, I, I've you know I've already made X amount of success for my social, I don't need to post as much, like blah, blah. I feel like I'd be letting a lot of people down. I'm, I'm out here trying to make life gains, you know? <laughs> it's all about them life gains. Yeah, life, life gains come before gym gains, you know? And, and That's a good phrase, you can put that on a t-shirt. I should. Yeah, Rather some people are like, what? One thing. Is that possible? Like, yeah, right. If something's more important, have you ever had this happen? You know, whenever, <laughs> uh, whenever a stylist or a barber is like, do you want me to trim your eyebrows? I'm like, they're that bad, yeah. <laughs> I have what you call caterpillars for eyebrows. They are pretty thick. Boom. Well, Max, you've gotten your haircut thanks to Anita. Anita, once again. Looks fantastic. Fantastic job. We got his hair styled. Used some original as a pre-styler. Uh, Monarch Matt Pace as a post-styler. You know, again, thanks so much for coming on the show. Anita David, if you're here in the Houston area, where's the Sugar, Sugar Land? Sugar Land, uh, definitely check her out. She does some, some great cuts. Um, if you want to check out Max Tuning, I've got his YouTube, his Instagram, everything down below. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming on. It's been a good one. Appreciate it. Yeah. Looking fresh. We'll see everybody. Goodbye. Next time.